Hello again. Back with the Phantom Tollbooth. I'm going to jump right into chapter 15. 14 left off with Milo, Tok, and the Humbug in the cave where all numbers in the whole kingdom um, are mined. And Dodecahedron, the uh, individual of 12 faces, led them there. And uh, there they met the math magician. Big, billowing human with a big robe, a tall pointy hat uh, that speaks in a deep voice. And let's jump right back in, okay? Chapter 15, This Way to Infinity. Into the cavern rushed eight of the strongest miners, carrying an immense cauldron which bubbled and sizzled and sent great clouds of savory steam spiraling slowly up to the ceiling. A sweet yet pungent aroma hung in the air and drifted easily from one anxious nose to the other, stopping only long enough to make several mouths water and stomachs growl. Milo, Tok, and the Humbug watched eagerly as the rest of the workers put down their tools and gathered around the big pot to help themselves. Perhaps you'd care for something to eat, said the math magician, offering each of them a heaping bowl. Yes, sir, said Milo, who was beside himself with hunger. Thank you, added Tok. The humbug made no reply, for he was already too busy eating, and in a moment the three of them had finished absolutely everything they'd been given. Please have another portion, said the math magician, filling their bowls once more. And, just as quickly as they'd finished the first one, the second was also emptied. Don't stop now! he insisted, serving them again, and again, and again, and again, and again. How very strange, thought Milo as he finished his seventh helping. Each one I eat makes me feel a little hungrier than the one before. Do have some more, suggested, suggested the math magician, and they continued to eat just as fast as he filled the plates. After Milo had eaten nine portions, Tok, eleven, and the humbug, without once stopping to look up, ate twenty-three bowls. The math magician blew his whistle for a second time, and immediately the pot was removed and the miners returned to work. Ugh! gasped the bug, suddenly realizing that he was twenty-three times hungrier than when he had started. I think I'm starving! Me too, complained Milo, whose stomach felt as empty as he could ever remember. I, <clears throat> I ate so much. Yes, <clears throat> yes, it was delicious, wasn't it? Agreed the pleased dodecahedron, wiping the gravy from several of his faces. It's the specialty of the kingdom. We call it subtraction stew. What does subtraction mean again? Is that... Combine or take away? Take away. So take away stew. I have more of an appetite than when I began, said Tok, leaning weakly against one of the large rocks. Certainly, replied the math magician. What do you expect? The more you eat, the hungrier you get. Everyone knows that. They do? said Milo doubtfully. Then... How do you ever get enough? Enough? He said impatiently. Here, in Digitopolis, we have our meals when we're full, and we eat until we are hungry. That way, when you don't have anything at all, you have more than enough. It's a very economical system, you know. You must have been quite stuffed in order to have eaten that much. It's completely logical, explained the dodecahedron. The more you want, the less you get. And the less you get, the more you have. Simple arithmetic, really. Suppose you had something, and you added something to it. What would that make? More, said Milo quickly. Correct, Dodecahedron nodded. Now, suppose you had something, and you added nothing to it. What would you have? The same. Milo answered again, without much conviction. Splendid! cried the dodecahedron. 
And suppose you had something, and you added less than nothing to it. What would you have then? Famine! roared the anguished humbug, who suddenly realized that was exactly what he'd eaten 23 bowls of. Well, it's not as bad as that, said the dodecahedron from his most sympathetic face. In a few hours, you'll be nice and full again, just in time for dinner. Oh, dear, said Milo sadly and softly. I only eat when I'm hungry. What a curious idea said the math magician, raising his staff over his head and scrubbing the rubber end back and forth several times on the ceiling. The next thing you'll have us believe is that you only sleep when you're tired. And by the time he'd finished the sentence, the cavern, the miners, and the dodecahedron all vanished, leaving just Milo, Tok, the humbug, and the math magician standing in the math magician's workshop. I often find... Math magician casually explained to his confused visitors that the best way to get from one place to another is to erase everything and begin again. Please make yourselves at home. Do you always travel that way? Asked Milo as he glanced curiously at the strange circular room whose 16 tiny arched windows corresponded exactly to the 16 points on the compass. You remember making your compass rose in the classroom, don't you? I wonder, if you made it again, would you find that it had 16 points? Or if you have a compass rose at home, maybe you could look at it and count and see how many points are on it. Anyway, around the entire circumference, or outside, were numbers from 0 up to 360, marking the degrees of the circle, and on the floor, walls, tables, chairs, desks, cabinets, and the ceiling, there were labels showing their height, width, depth, and distances to each other. To one side was a gigantic notepad set on an artist's easel, and from hooks and strings hung a collection of scales, rulers, measures, weights, tapes, and all sorts of other devices for measuring any number of things in every possible way. No, indeed, replied the math magician, and this time he raised the sharpened end of his staff. He drew a thin, straight line in the air, and then walked gracefully across it from one side of the room to the other. Most of the time, I take the shortest distance between two points, and, of course, when I need to be in several places at once, he remarked, writing 7 times 1 equals 7, carefully on the notepad, I simply multiply. Suddenly, there were seven math magicians standing side by side, and each one looked exactly the same. How did you do that? gasped Milo. Well, there's nothing to it, they all said together. If you have a magic staff... Then, six of them canceled themselves out and simply disappeared. But it's only a pencil, the humbug objected, tapping the end of it with his cane. True enough, agreed the math magician, but once you learn how to use it, there's no end to what you can do. Can you make things disappear? asked Milo excitedly. Why, certainly, bellowed the math magician, striding over to the easel. Just... Step a little closer and watch carefully. After demonstrating that there was nothing up his sleeves, in his hat, or behind his back, he wrote quickly, 4 plus 9 minus 2 times 16 plus 1 divided by 3 times 6 minus 67 plus 8 times 2 minus 3 plus 26 minus 1 divided by 34 plus 3 divided by 7 plus 2 minus 5 equals... Then the math magician looked up. 17! shouted the humbug who always managed to be the first with the wrong answer. It, it, it all comes to zero, corrected Milo. Precisely, said the math magician, making a very theatrical bow. And the entire line of numbers vanished before their eyes, 
Now, is there anything else you'd like to see? Yes, please, said Milo. Can you show me the biggest number there is? I'd be delighted, he replied, opening one of his closet doors. We keep it right here. It took four miners to dig it out. Inside was the biggest three Milo had ever seen. It was fully twice as high as the math magician. No, 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 that's not what I mean, objected Milo. Can you show me the longest number there is? Oh, surely, said the math magician, opening another door. Why, here it is. It took three carts to carry it. Inside the closet was the longest eight imaginable. It was just about as wide as the three was tall. No, 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 that's not what I mean either, said Milo, looking helplessly at Tok. I think what you would like to see, said the dog, scratching himself just under half past four, is the number of possible, of greatest possible magnitude. Well, why didn't you say so, said the math magician, who was busily measuring the edge of a raindrop. Well, what's the biggest number you can think of? The math magician asked. Nine trillion, nine hundred ninety-nine billion, nine hundred ninety-nine million, nine hundred ninety-nine thousand, nine hundred ninety-nine, reacted Milo breathlessly. Very good, said the math magician. Now add one to it. Now add one again. He repeated when Milo had added the previous one. Now add one again, and again, and again. Now add one again, now add one again, now add. <sighs> but when will I stop? Pleaded Milo. Why never, said the math magician with a little smile. smile. For the number you want is always at least one more than the number you've got. And it's so large that if you started yesterday, you wouldn't finish tomorrow. Where could, you, uh, where could you ever find a number so big? scoffed the humbug. In the same place they have the smallest number there is, the math magician answered helpfully. And you know what that is. Certainly, said the humbug, suddenly remembering something to do at the other end of the room. Is it one one million? asked Milo, trying to think of the smallest fraction possible. Almost, said the math magician. Now divide it in half. Okay, now divide it in half again. Now divide it in half again and again. Oh, don't stop. Now divide it in half again. Now divide it in half again. Now divide. Oh, oh dear, shouted Milo, holding his hands to his ears. Doesn't that ever stop either? How can it? Said the math magician. When you can always take half of whatever you have left until it's so small that if you started to say it right now, you'd finish even before you began. Where could you find anything so tiny? Milo asked, trying very hard to imagine such a thing. The math magician stopped what he was doing and explained simply, why, in a box that's so small you cannot see it. And that box is kept in a drawer that's so small you can't see it, in a dresser that's so small you can't see it, in a house that's so small you can't see it, on a street that's so small you can't see it, in a city that's so small you can't see it, which is part of a country that's so small you can't see it, in a world that's so small you can't see it. Then the math magician sat down, fanned himself with a handkerchief, and continued. Then, of course, we keep the whole thing in another box that's so small you can't see it, and if you follow me, I'll show you where it is. They walked to one of the small windows, and there, tied to the windowsill, was one end of a line that stretched along the ground and into the distance and completely out of sight. Just follow that line forever, said the math magician, and when you reach the end, turn left. There you'll find the land of infinity, where the tallest, the shortest, the biggest, the smallest, and the most and the least of everything are kept. I really don't have that much time, said Milo anxiously. Isn't there a quicker way? 
Well, you might try this flight of stairs, Math Magician suggested, opening another door and pointing up. It goes there too. Milo bounded across the room and started up the stairs, two at a time. Wait for me, please, he shouted to talk in the humbug. I'll be gone just a few minutes. And that is the end of chapter 15, Milo on his way to the land of infinity. I wonder, can you imagine a string that starts maybe at your window and it stretches down your street and gets eventually to, um, to school? And then it keeps going and stretches beyond that to um, the next state and stretches beyond that to the next country. And eventually it just keeps stretching and going out of our atmosphere and into space. And it goes past all of the planets, past Mars, past Jupiter, past Saturn, past Uranus, past Neptune. And it leaves our solar system and then the it gets out of our solar system, but is still in our Milky Way galaxy, and then it eventually leaves our galaxy and reaches another galaxy, and then another galaxy, and then, oh, before you know it, your string is going from your windowsill all the way to the end of the universe. Can you, can you imagine that in your head? Can you picture that in your head? Because that is the sort of distance that infinity might represent. A never-ending distance. Could you draw a picture of maybe the window in your bedroom? Kind of like the window you see behind me. But maybe you draw that, a rectangle with a line in the middle. And maybe you draw yourself kind of like looking out the window. And then a little string. You maybe you use a ruler to draw it perfectly straight. You just draw it along your page. And it, maybe it goes past the state of Indiana and you draw a picture of Indiana. And then it goes past the United States and you draw a little picture of what the United States looks like. And then the Earth. And then the solar system. And then the galaxy. And then the other galaxies. And then before you know it, you're in outer space in um, the massive expanse. I think that might be really, really cool. Maybe give that a try and see what it looks like. It'd be really neat to see, to start really small, like your home, and to get really massive into the universe. Awesome. Give that a try if you're up for it. It could be a really fun art project. You could use any, any sort of material. It could be watercolors. could be colored pencil, marker, crayon. Um, heck, maybe you do it on your driveway in sidewalk chalk. Oh, that'd be cool. And then you could draw that line really, really, really long. Or maybe if you live on a really calm street, um, like I know some of you do, maybe your line goes along the edge of the street and you draw each of those things along the way. I would love to see pictures, or if it is that big, it's probably gonna be a video, but I'd love to see what you create. All right, I hope you're enjoying these. Chapter 16 tomorrow.